Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I'm your host, the Voice of Reason. So in this episode, I am going to conduct a uh, Ukraine-Russia update and just kind of talk about some observations uh, on uh, some events that I have uh, recently observed. And uh, there was a question uh, that I'll try to answer that was posed in one of the comment sections. But first... Uh, the uh, the Russian military buildup uh, around uh, Ukraine continues. Uh, there continues to be uh, video footage flowing in of uh, of these long uh, convoys and uh, train uh, convoys of uh, Russian armored vehicles uh, moving into the region. One uh, specific interesting pieces of information I was able to observe and uh, has uh, really uh, kind of got my um, attention is uh, on a lot of these tanks that you see uh, now being deployed towards Ukraine, such as the, uh, the T-72, uh, B-3, and other models of the uh, T-72. Normally, when Russia conducts um, operations, uh, you don't often see the fuel tank uh, mounted on the back of the uh, of the main battle tank. Uh, there's simply no need uh, to uh, mount uh, that fuel tank when you're conducting localized operations or localized trainings at a training area. But now we're seeing these fuel tanks uh, mounted on the rear of a lot of these uh, Russian main battle tanks, which uh, could lead one to believe that uh, these tanks are looking to travel uh, significant distances uh, if, in fact, uh, they are deployed for uh, operational purposes. Uh, another... Uh, uh, thing I have seen is is the white uh, stripe uh, being painted down the middle of some vehicles uh, that has been used in the past uh, as uh, identification markings uh, where aircraft uh, could possibly uh, see uh, that you are a uh, you are a friendly vehicle. Uh, only seen a few of those, and and and, and you saw quite a bit of that during uh, Soviet times, such as uh, operations that took place in in Hungary and and so forth. But but really, I don't think that's as significant as the uh, the fuel tank uh, mounted on the back of some of these main battle tanks. And uh, another uh, a question had ar arisen on the uh, comment section that I spoke about. That uh, you know, why does Russia want to uh, take the Ukraine? Well, I, I don't think Russia wants to take the Ukraine. I think Russia uh, first uh, there are uh, significant peoples in the Ukraine, in eastern Ukraine, that identify as as Russian, a very large percentage of the population. Uh, what that is, we we really don't know. Uh, but it, it absolutely exists. Um, next, there is uh, there's lots of of industry uh, in eastern Ukraine that um, members of the uh, of the Russian government feel that uh, a, a lot of that was created by uh, the Russians, obviously during during Soviet times. But that could be debated, uh, go, going back and forth. But again, uh, lots of uh, industry, uh, especially in uh, uh, Kharkiv, uh, major uh, military industries in this area, and just and, and lots of, of factories, uh, lots of uh, steel and uh, smeltering industry, and so forth. And uh, then there is the issue of water, and I'll and I'll try and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So. Uh, the Crimean Peninsula, which uh, prior to, uh, I believe it was 1954, was was actually part of Russia. And uh, Nikita Khrushchev uh, uh, actually gave the Crimea to the Ukraine. And uh, 
just on a side note, uh, Khrushchev was, in fact, a Ukrainian, and he was uh, the uh, uh, the Soviet uh, premier uh, back in Soviet times. But uh, Crimea has and has had a a water shortage, and uh, in uh, I believe it was 1961, a canal was built. Um, and I'll try and find it, and I believe this is it right here, uh, along that would feed water from the Dnieper River uh, into Crimea. And what you'll find interesting is that let's just travel the route of the canal, and you can clearly see that there's water in the canal, water in the canal, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll trace it down, and all of a sudden it starts to stop no water and then you get to right here and there it is the Ukrainians have blocked the uh, water supply into Crimea and uh, that is significant uh, for Crimea and it impacts uh, the, the uh, Crimea significantly and uh, that could be a another reason among multiple reasons that uh, Russia could want to retain uh, some of these lands. One, again, uh, a lot of these areas uh, have people that identify as Russians and are sympathetic to Russians, and they, in fact, uh, don't speak uh, the Ukrainian uh, language, to my understanding. And uh, so there's just not one issue. There's a, uh, there's a multitude of issues. And then there's the whole security issue that I had talked about in a previous episode. And uh, if you look at uh, eastern uh, Ukraine, there is no major um, uh, terrain features that uh, can be defended. Uh, from either, obviously, the Russian side or the Ukrainian side, for that matter, but specifically the Russian side. All this is very flat uh, farmland. And uh, if uh, the Ukraine were to become a member of NATO, uh, obviously you could see uh, Western uh, heavy tank brigades training in some of these areas. And... If you're an American, you know, you, you scratch your head and you say, so what? Well, Americans have not um, lived and experienced the same history as Russia. Okay, you got to think back to World War One. You have to think back to World War Two. I had discussed, you know, a lot of the borders that, uh, that Russia share, but, um, but, but again, you, you look back at the at the buffer zone that Russia had even at the onset of World War II, which actually extended into Poland, okay, and now all of, all of a sudden there is no buffer zone, and uh, the, uh, the one-time uh, uh, basically state within the Soviet Union is now a NATO member, well, that's, that's significant for you, and, and many of these leaders uh, in the Kremlin uh, are from that time period, obviously. So it, it concerns them. The security situation concerns them. And these are, are legitimate concerns that you just can't simply whitewash and say they don't exist and, uh, and, and just say Russia is, is trying to conquer the world because that is simply not the case. Thanks, everybody.